Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we have a story from one of our viewers who was solo backpacking in the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York. Late at night, he was confronted by something that was extremely terrifying. That's next. Okay guys, tonight is a windy night. We got a little bit of smoke up in the mountains and I am testing out another tent. I have my white duck canvas tent really a sturdy outdoor wilderness type tent it even has a wood stove i'm not using it tonight but i'm probably going to set this up in the plumas national forest for a couple weeks next month or this fall and use it as a base camp to do my stories from so for tonight's beer we have from the lost coast brewery we have a fog cutter double ipa isn't that awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's got a skull rider riding a some kind of a chopper or something so and we're gonna put that in the cup tonight so I was thinking about drinking right out of the uh, can but yeah we got a, a breezy night and it's nice and cozy in the uh, tent here so <laughs> well, that is really good cheers So this story comes to us from one of our viewers, his name is Nick, and Nick is 35 years old. He lives in upstate New York, and in 2019, he decided he wanted to go solo backpacking. He hadn't been doing much in nature, he'd camped with a few friends, a few hikes, and he really wanted to get out there and solo backpack. So he went and got himself an REI Quarter Dome 1, which is a tent I have. 2.7 pounds it's like the size of a 12 inch subway sandwich it works awesome and his goal was to go to the adirondacks which are about an hour away from where he lived the adirondacks were set aside in 1892 by the state of new york as a state park six million acres about 50 percent of it is private and the other 50 percent is state land reserves forest reserves of mountains rivers lakes great canoe country awesome colors in the fall and just a great area of wildness and nature set aside for the state of new york nick's goal was to go to the high peaks region which has 46 peaks and was really popular as has been popular since the 1920s his goal was to camp in this high peaks region between Mount Marcy and Basin Peak. It was like a, a saddle in between. And Mount Marcy is 5,432 feet tall. It is the highest point in New York. So he gets his gear, goes through it, makes sure he's got everything he needs, and he loads it up and he does the hour drive near Keene, New York, the Loge Trailhead. He starts out there, he got his gear on his back, he's ready to go, and he heads out, goes across this dam, down the trail. He's got about a six mile hike to go. Along the trail, another trail branches off, a more obscure trail, and it takes him to the Mount Basin. He finishes out the hike, and he gets to this point roughly in between, about a mile and a half this way to Mount Marcy, and a mile and a half the other way to Basin Peak. And he goes, this is about where I should be. And he goes about 200 feet off the trail, finds a clearing, and goes to work setting up his camp. Gets, gets a fire put together, gets his tent up, gets his food out, he's ready to go. It starts to get dark, he lights the fire. And now he's Got some chicken, some rice, some other things, and he's just enjoying the evening, cooking, hanging out, watching the stars, and just kind of what he'd hoped to do was just get out and be in nature in this high peaks wilderness. Gets to the end of his night, it's about 10 o'clock, decides to call it a night, puts a fire out, wraps everything up, goes into his tent, zips it shut, crawls in, and he is out in less than a minute. 
So about three hours later, Nick wakes up about 1 a.m. to the sound of, and this is what he said, and I talked to him. He emailed me and then we talked on the phone. He said it sounded like a large person was smacking two logs together. And he was trying to make sense of this. And it's like, this doesn't make any sense. That's what it sounds like. And then he thought, well, maybe somebody's setting up a camp and they came in really late. You know, this is a camping area. It's a hiking area. Maybe it's another hiker and they came in really late and they're putting their camp together. It's a little weird. It's a little off, but maybe that's what's going on. But he still couldn't get past this large log smacking together. But he concluded this has got to be something like somebody's making a camp. So he decided, okay, I'm going to let it go and go back to sleep. He goes to sleep. About 30 minutes later, he didn't even know why he woke up. But he woke up and it was dead quiet. There was nothing. There was no sound. And he said it was strange. It was this eerie quietness. Almost like in the movies where they say it's quiet, too quiet. Like you're expecting something to happen. And so he's sitting up in his tent, it's dark, and he's listening and there's just nothing. There's no crickets, there's no night sounds or anything, no breeze, it's just dead quiet. And he's thinking, I don't know if I can just go back to sleep. He felt comfortable enough to get his flashlight, unzip the tent, and go out and kind of stretch his legs and just kind of look around just for a moment and see what's going, if there's anything going on or whatever. He just didn't feel right just sitting there waiting for something to happen. He goes over to where he assumed this camp would have been set up. There was like a clearing and it was a flatter area there and he thought, okay, this is maybe, and he's shining the flashlight. He didn't want to shine right in the, into their tent if there was a tent there. So he's kind of keeping it low. There was no tent. There was no camp. There was nothing there. And he felt kind of strange. Okay, this is a little strange. I assumed there was going to be a tent or a camp or something going on over here. You know, maybe there's sound asleep. Nothing. So he walks over closer to his tent, behind his tent, and there's this tree line, really dense forest behind his tent in the clearing. And he's standing there with a flashlight, just shining around, just kind of investigating the whole area. And suddenly he hears these loud footsteps about 50 feet in front of him and a little bit to the right coming towards him and he said Chris these were not just loud but it sounded like whatever was making the sound was really heavy really big and it was coming right towards me and he's listening to these loud footsteps and you can hear branches breaking and twigs snapping and the brush movement in the brush and it's coming right towards him and it just froze him in his tracks he's just standing there and he's by himself middle of the night and there's these two bipedal footsteps very loud coming towards him getting louder and he's not sure what to do he's kind of frozen and he's kind of and it's happening really quickly too and suddenly they stop and whatever this thing was was just inside the trees and he could smell this horrible stench and again he told me he said this stench, this smell was so strong, it made me almost want to vomit, throw up. <sighs> and he's still standing there, and suddenly, out of the tree line, this dense trees, came a rock. It hit him in the shoulder, just pelted him right in the shoulder. And he said it hurt. But he also said, whatever or whoever threw it, it felt like they were trying to get his attention 
And then again, another rock came out, and this one hit him in the knee. And it really got his attention. And then, out of this dense brush, emerges, and this is what he said, emerges this large, beastly silhouette. It was eight feet tall. And he had the sh flashlight right on it. Just frozen. And he said it had this long, black, dark brown hair and very smooth, almost like somebody had combed it over its entire body, except the face. And he said the face was this long face. It was not ape or human. Really creepy. He said the eyes were about an inch and a half wide. Just big, these big round eyes. And this wide, large mouth on this thing. The arms were really long and thick. Muscular, thick. He said it had a really unique posture. It wasn't upright and it wasn't bent over. It was somewhere in between. Almost like a human and an ape hybrid or something. And he's staring at this thing and he said... The sound became eerily quiet again, and it's almost like the world stood still just for a moment, and he lost track of time. And he's staring at this thing. You couldn't take his eyes off of it, and that's what he said. You couldn't take his eyes off of this thing. And it's just staring at him in silence. And he didn't know what to do, and he's just frozen with fear. And then suddenly this very large, wide mouth opens up and it has this ear-piercing, gravelly, howl, yell. And it hurt his ear. It just hurt his ears really bad. And in that moment, suddenly the fight or flight finally kicks in and he turns and he, he needs to run. And he knows he has to go to the tent. And he told me he knew he couldn't just run off into the forest and try to get away from this thing because this thing could have easily tracked him down and he knew he couldn't run back to the trail and just take a left and go down the trail to the trail it was six miles away six miles back to his vehicle he also needed to get his keys his wallet probably his jacket flashlight he already had the flashlight but he knew he couldn't do that so he said I had to go to the tent and soon as he turned with the flashlight now whatever he was staring at was in total darkness. He couldn't see it anymore. And he felt this vulnerability like he's running back to his tent and this thing could be chasing him. He had no idea at this point. He runs to the tent, unzips the tent, jumps in, literally went under the sleeping bag and he found his knife, opens up his pocket knife just to have something to work with and he just expected this thing to come up to the tent and mess with the tent or who knows what but it was eerily quiet again just total silence again and that just freaked him out even more because he was just on edge waiting for who knows what to happen I've had stories where they come up and they tap on the tent and they they walk around the tent and obviously throwing rocks or pine cones just waiting for something to happen. And it's about 1.30 in the morning, so he's got to go through the whole night now. And he can't sleep. He said somewhere in the middle of the night, he's listening and he heard something walk right by his tent. He said, Chris, I couldn't confirm if it was this thing, Sasquatch, or if it was a bear. He, he couldn't quite tell, but he heard something walk by his tent a few hours later. He's sitting in his tent, and he said he feared for his life. He thought this could be it with what he had seen. And he clearly saw this thing with the flashlight, and he stood there long enough because he froze up, and he's just totally gave me this clear description of this thing. He's waiting and waiting finally feels like the sun's coming up 
he unzips the tent and he can see that there's enough light where he doesn't need the flashlight anymore. So he already had his gear packed, his sleeping bag was already rolled up and he was busy taking care of stuff and so he threw the gear out of the tent, broke the tent down, packed it up as quickly as he could, got the backpack on, took one last look at the tree line to make sure this thing wasn't still standing there or who knows what, turns and he runs the 200 feet back down to the trail. Takes another look behind him and then he moves down the trail past the bridge and the creek the six miles to the trail. He said he did the six miles in about 40 minutes maybe even a little less. He said he was pretty much running the entire way back to the trailhead. He didn't want to take any chances, take any time. He just wanted to get as quickly as possible. Gets to the, gets to the trailhead, throws his backpack in the back seat of the car, starts the car, gets out of the parking lot, heads for the highway and works his way back home. He told me, he said he hasn't backpacked since that time at all. He's camped a few times with some friends in a campground, done a few hikes, not much. He said he will never ever go back to that spot between Mount Marcy and Basin Peak. It's a very popular area, it's got Mount Marcy, highest point in New York State, a lot of people want to go there. It's not an obscure location, but he said he will never ever go back there again. Nick told me that before this encounter he didn't believe in Bigfoot. He thought how could something this big go undetected all this time? Just a few people seeing him here and there. Then he thought about it on the drive home after this happened to him. And he thought about it and he said maybe they've been there the whole time. Maybe we haven't seen them because they're so smart. They can stay hidden and undetected by us. Maybe they've been roaming free in the forest forever, only leaving footprints and a few small clues. Maybe they are real. Maybe Bigfoot does exist. And that is from Nick in upstate New York. Thank you, Nick. For your story that you sent in and what an experience to have this face-to-face -face encounter in the middle of the night with this thing and to see all these details pretty incredible and to be by yourself I just hard to imagine I'm out there by myself a lot as well but I haven't never had that happen to me but we are gonna play uh, the interview that I had with him, he does not retell the entire story. I have some specific questions that I ask him about his experience, and he answers those, and he does a good job with that. So if you want to hear that, that is next. So roll it. I had some questions uh, for you. Um, it sounded like quite an experience for you. I, I just oh, can't yeah. imagine seeing something like that. Uh, when Terrifying. you first... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it's, I, and I say this a lot, um, it's kind of surreal that we're even talking about something like this, with yeah. somebody that um, saw something like this. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. It's not like, well, I saw a grizzly bear in a national park, you know, that was unbelievable. It's like, no, this mm -hmm. is, uh, this is beyond unbelievable and i've uh like i've said in my videos and stuff i've heard things i've found footprints uh i've had uh, things some things happen to me but i've never seen one directly like you have uh so so i had the three or four questions um you answered many yeah. of them in the email and very descriptive but when you you Thank first you. settled in for the night and you're in between the Mount Marcy and, is it called Basin Mountain? Yeah, so right next to Basin is a, another mountain called Sawtooth. And Basin's a bit smaller, so you don't really see it on the map too much. But if you zoom in, it'll uh, it'll show you right there. Yeah, I was right between there, yeah. about two miles yeah. uh, in the middle of each. Sounds like a good camp spot, actually. But, 
But so you were in your tent and you heard this. You called it a loud smacking sound. Can you kind of describe that? Yes. And then I, I know you said, well, you kind of assumed it was a, a, another camper, which is a pretty logical assumption. I would have done yeah. probably exactly the same thing. But can you describe that sound a little bit more? Yeah, no problem. So, um, like I said, um, I I had been sleeping for about three hours. I I think about maybe two and a half, something like that. And it was 1 a.m. I'd say maybe, uh, and I and I just I woke up out of nowhere, um, weirdly, and I just heard this like you know when it when you hear just like two pieces of wood being smacked together, it's it's quite distinct. It's not like a, a metal being smacked smacked. Mm-hmm. So um, I just but it sounded like two larger pieces of wood. Like I don't think I could uh, smack two giant logs together that that easily. So. But I just thought maybe someone was uh, cutting something down. I, I had no idea, but I was just thinking, hopefully it's just another person trying to make a campfire, right? Um, yeah. But, yeah, I just thought that it was someone sense. else, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that makes total sense because you, you hear this, you know, they're doing something, setting up their camp or something, so it just makes sense. But but it, it's obviously it wasn't a hammer on a like a tent stake or – yeah, metal or something. It was sounded like wood smacking together. So, and then For sure, yeah. you, you said it got really quiet, and then you went out to kind of walk around and relax and just kind of okay. Um, uh, first off, what kind of flashlight did you have? And then you walked over and you looked at the camp where you thought there would possibly be a campsite, and then kind of describe that. Yeah. So it was no noise at that point there was nothing else happening there were, there wasn't that smacking sound anymore about that time um i i had this you know those larger flashlights i don't know what they're called at this point they like that they're larger and they have a handle oh, i mm-hmm. can't think of their name yeah. um it's, uh, it I, but I it was it's very bright yeah um it was very bright you could probably see i don't know what its distance could be i'd say maybe um I don't know, maybe 45, 50 feet. It was, it's very bright flashlight. Yeah. I got, I got one like that as well. And and then you walked over and, uh, there were some thick trees that you walked towards were kind of where that sound was. And then describe the sound that you heard of like these footsteps coming towards you. So, you know the noise of just like your basic walking through the forest, maybe you're hiking, that that sort of noise. It was that noise, but it was amplified to a level that I've never heard before. It mm. was just so loud, I don't think I could recreate it myself. It was it was weird. Wow. wow. I, I can't yeah, it was Was it coming towards you? Like was it getting louder and coming right straight towards you before the rocks were thrown? Yeah, so it sounded like it was coming diagonally at that point. Um, okay. It sounded sort of um, far away, but it got closer, and eventually, obviously, I could see what it was. Yeah, yeah. And then, so the sound got louder and louder, and then all of a sudden, it burst out of the trees. I mean, I know the rocks were thrown right before it, it came out of the trees. Yes. Yeah. And then, then you... Um, saw this thing and you said let's see it was a large beastly silhouette about eight feet tall which mm-hmm. is really crazy to even be talking like that and you saw the face and you mentioned that it was uh, a very long straight face can you kind of describe that a little bit more yeah so the, the basic human face let's say is it's more circular um um, the, it, the features aren't as distinct as what you think, um, but this it was like it was like uh, I'd say it was less wide of a face. It wasn't as circular, and I'd say it was um, it, it's long. So if our face, let's say, is um, oh, how large is our face? It's it's almost a foot. This this thing's face was just much longer. It's so hard to describe wow. at this point. Yeah, yeah. It was just it was longer, but it was thinner too. It just had a larger mouth, I could say, a larger jaw. It was almost it was wow. like an ape has a smaller head. Yeah, I I can't describe it. It 
that's that's the best I could do. Okay. And then it was staring at you, and then it made this loud growl roar. Can you describe yes. that just a little bit more? Because that was that's and it was real. And you mentioned it later in your email that it got really quiet, and so there was some time there where you noticed this quiet. Can can you describe that right before the roar, and then the roar? Yes. Yeah, so as I came out, um, obviously there was a little bit more than just the silhouette I could feel. Um, just a, a, obviously I was terrified out of my mind. I couldn't I couldn't think about anything at that point. But um, yeah, that that terrible smell just emanated yeah. from the forest, and suddenly everything got quiet, almost as if I was just focusing right on that thing, and I, I couldn't hear anything else. The, it, the everything dissipated. I couldn't hear anything, and then obviously the huge, undescribable, loud roar, terrifying, came out of that thing's mouth. Yeah. And did it? Did you like hear it echo, like in the little valley? Was it just, just really loud? And like, like how many seconds was it? The roar. I don't know if I could even call it a roar. It it probably lasted, I'd say, a good three seconds. And um, okay. Yeah, as far as echoing, I could, I, I think I could just barely hear it again. It was, it, it was that loud because yeah. two miles, uh, four miles in between the two mountains there, that's a lot yeah. for it to take to do. So I don't know. I, I maybe it was just in my head, but I feel like I did hear it echo a little bit. Yes. Pro- probably there's probably some echo, but I was just, just trying to understand exactly what you heard. And you mentioned it was so loud it may have damage your ear one of your ears yeah i was i was talking about that um but yeah afterwards uh it was i believe my left ear i i really couldn't hear too much out of that one my right ear was um a bit normal but the, my left ear was like fully messed out messed up um I, I actually played the drum set and whenever i am not hearing uh or not a wearing ear protection it was it's that feeling when i hit the crash symbol it just like deafens my left ear yeah. yeah, that that so my left ear is generally uh weaker than my right and that's probably why that one uh wow. almost basically went deaf for a little bit there. Yeah. Right after that you wisely ran back to your tent and you mentioned that you didn't you didn't feel it was right to just go running blindly off the forest or just run down the trail back to the vehicle. And I think that was like mm-hmm. your best move you could do and under the circumstance I, I I would have hopefully done the same thing. But you went into your tent and then kind of describe what that felt like. You busted out your knife and then you, I don't, it, yeah. it, from what I remember you said, I don't think you even slept, but describe the, the the rest of the night now kind of going through that. So, yeah, being about like one thirty a.m., that sort of time there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that time, there's still quite a lot couple hours until there is a little bit of like a break of light um so sitting there with my i brought two knives i think I, it was a larger one and then i think i described my smaller pocket knife um but i did take out the larger one um and the smaller one. uh but i i was just sitting there in the corner all i was thinking about is if this thing comes up to me what am i going to do i i can't run the thing could probably maybe outrun me or but uh, I, I just kept on thinking about tons of like outcomes of this this encounter and what could happen if I were to leave the tent. So having being overcome with this uh this feeling and these thoughts, I just couldn't find it in me to uh come out of that tent and I didn't fall asleep until well, I didn't fall asleep at all, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Were you pretty alert listening for anything? And you mentioned there was possible something else uh, that walked by your tent during that time as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was, um, I was for sure, I was listening. I was trying to listen to everything around me, just being as as alert as possible, keeping, like, the my eyes open um, um, and my ears, obviously. Um, and then at one point, as I said, I think I... I, I I told you in the email, I thought I heard um, something walk quite close back uh, through the brush around my tent, um, but I, that could have just been um, a bear. I, I have no idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that must have been really frightening. 
for you. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, you mentioned, like, as soon as the, there was just enough light and you didn't really need the flashlight, you busted everything down and yeah. packed up, took one last look at the trees, and then you you mm -hmm. just bugged out. You, then you you said you went six miles in in like uh, 30 minutes or so? Is that what <laughs> Something like that. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably around made, 30 minutes. Yeah, you made really yeah. good time. <laughs> Which <laughs> makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, cool. that's, that's your body going, you know what? There's no reason <laughs> to, to that make adrenaline, this slow yeah. trip. <laughs> this is just move as quickly as possible and, and keep it keep it the train moving here so yeah wow yeah. well that is quite an experience and so how has that affected you uh up to today you said uh, what did this happen i think 2019 is that what you said uh yes uh, yeah august of 2000 yep. yeah august of 20, 2019 yep 2019 and um, so how so, has um, that affected you t t today so uh, ever, ever since then, I really have tried not to venture out too far from, let's just call it civilization. I really have not camped other than um, I, I've gone a couple times with friends to campsites, but um, just like the normal ones that are by the side of the lake with like a parking lot next to them, I really have tried not to go backpacking again, um, which I hope, uh, and tenting, I hope to try to um, do that again sometime soon, but um, it's going to be pretty hard for me to get back out there without being worried. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you. Yeah, I would take your time with it and just uh, take it take it slowly. There's, yeah, uh, definitely. There's plenty, of, plenty of good camping in the campsite or whatever you've been doing. So, yeah. Well, I um, I really appreciate your, your story and your sending in your story and then your, um, you know, correspondence yeah. back and forth with emails and stuff and uh, just trying to understand it so and thank you uh so much for um putting so much of your time into this uh, and i uh it means a lot to me yeah okay you you bet yeah i i, I can't imagine what you've been through but that's kind of part, part of why i'm here is there's people that you know i i don't know how many people you've told in your life but as you know a lot of people tell people their friends or family members and a lot of times they get ridiculed or laughed at or dismissed or whatever and that's so that's yeah. probably why I, I do what i do is to give them a, a voice or people like you uh some voice to your experience thank you nick well good good talking with you and no uh, problem. if you have any yeah. updates or anything let me know that'd be great but otherwise I for sure answer yeah. all questions